Good. Very good. good. Thank you for being in the shade. Appreciate that. We're off to a good start. Yes. Oh my God, I, I can imagine. Stranger to Tuscaloosa, you've been here plenty of times, but yeah. just, just talk about the buzz from a Friday leading into a Saturday when Alabama has got a massive game against a team like that. Oh, it's one of our favorite places. I, I don't know the the, uh, the numbers, but I think we've been here as much, if not more, than anywhere else in the country. Um, so I love coming here. I, I, I love Coach Saban. So the program is so consistent. Um, and then the buzz when it's a when it's a big game. Whenever these Alabama fans feel threatened. It, it just adds to the spice. It adds to the uh, the anticipation. And I think anytime you bring in, bring in a huge brand like Texas, and especially the way the game went last year, um, it definitely, there, there's just a different feeling. This is our first time on campus this year. We were in Charlotte uh, last week for the North Carolina, South Carolina, kind of a neutral site game. So our first time being back on campus, my 28th year on college game day. and Never gets old, you know, just being around it and feeling the energy of the campus. What did you see from Alabama? Um, you know, I, I saw a defense that, you know, I, I think a lot of people, or what, not, not me, I picked them to win the national championship. There are a lot of people questioning how good they can be, especially without guys like Will Anderson, Brian Branch. And I think they lost seven of their top eight tacklers, so there's some questions. But, man, I think one thing that people that don't follow Bama closely understand is some of these guys, these guys that have been in, in more of a, a backup role uh, would come in in a, in a sub package now are taking on primary roles and they've waited their time and, and they kind of have an edge to them and there's an energy to that defense at least week one against an inferior opponent this is the game obviously we find out how good they are but that that stood out to me uh the way they're flying around kevin Steele, new dc and then of course it's it's jalen Milrow. i mean everybody wondered who would win that job uh jalen looked great you know making plays and sometimes that one snap went over his head he turned it into a touchdown uh, he, he has so much athletic ability, so that stood out. Uh, but this could be a different battle. I mean, Texas is SEC defensive lineman, got one of the best middle linebackers in the country, Jalen Ford. So this is, again, the week we, we really find out what this offense is about with a new offensive coordinator and Tommy Reese and, and this quarterback and, and Jalen Ford. Did you think it was going to be Milrow when you made that pick? And then now that you've seen him play a game, do you feel a little bit better about your pick? Or? Yeah, I, to me, respectful to all the players on the field and there are a lot of people that are like laughing that I picked Alabama to win the national championship but I'm only going by history I mean I, I you could have not told me who's on the roster and as long as the guy that is the head coach is still the head coach I would have picked Alabama because if you go back and look from 2009 their first year uh, that he won the championship and then just track them it's very rare for them to go a couple years and then not win it so I just feel like the programs do. So knowing that, I, I even heard some of their quotes, like they, they feel very disrespected. I love hearing that. They, they have a chip on their shoulder. They're angry. No one's giving them any credit. I'm like, yes, yeah. I mean, I, I love to hear that. And I, I, that was what I was kind of banking on, is these players feel disrespected because they haven't back-to-back -back years without winning at all. So um, I think they're a bit, for by Alabama standards, they're a bit of an underdog. You take Bryce Young away, you take Will Anderson away. I think a lot of people are like, yeah, well, Georgia's a new bar in college football. I just think that that doesn't sit well with Alabama. And I'm kind of betting on that's the team that's going to kind of show up with a bit of a chip on their shoulder every single week. But, yeah, seeing him play, that was uh, exciting to see. i still looking forward to seeing. For them to do what they want to do, they're going to have to be able to throw the ball consistently against really good opponents in some really tough environments. So this will be a great week just to kind of see how far along they are uh, with their passing game because they're going to have to make plays through the air this week. Turk, you mentioned uh, tech, uh, Alabama fans feeling threatened. Is that a legitimate feeling, or is that manufactured just because of the, the numbers in the matchup, the top ten matchup? No, I, I think it's – I think they, of course, manufacture some of that, like Georgia did. Georgia won it all two years ago when they beat Bama. Then they came back and they were preseason, whatever they were, one or two. But if you listen to Nolan Smith and those players, they're like, nobody believes. It's like everyone had you in the top two or three all year. So it's amazing how you can manipulate 
an 18 to 22 year old uh, player. And I'll tell you, there's power in getting an entire group to get mad. I, yeah, an angry football team in college football is a dangerous team. And so I think some of it's manufactured, but I think some of it is is real. You know, all you gotta do is go on Twitter or listen to what people say. You don't have to go very far to get motivated. And um, there aren't a ton of people that are picking them to win the national championship. So again, I think the guys that think about being a player that's had to sit there like a Braswell or, or some of these guys that have had to wait their turn and now they get to be that team. And I've even heard people, I think uh, I think so, me, Reese or somebody brought it up, like if you look at Texas's roster, you look at Alabama's roster, people are saying that there's more NFL players on the Texas roster than the Alabama roster. So if I'm an Alabama player, I'm sure you hear that. And again, I, I think that adds to your fuel. Brian, Denny, two more for Brian Denny isn't put up with like Tiger Stadium if you're yeah. when it comes to intimidating places. You've been all around the country in these stadiums for a big Alabama night game like we're going to get tomorrow night. Do you think Brian Denny is almost an underrated atmosphere? I'd say, first of all, whoever's in charge of game ops at Alabama as a guy, I talked about this last year when I did their game. I think it was against Mississippi State. Whoever's in charge of game ops, whoever they hire to do that, and with the, the lasers and the DJ, I'm telling you right now, I travel to every stadium in this new world of better have Wi-Fi in the stadium and all that stuff. Alabama is at a different level. So you guys should report whoever that person is <laughs> deserves a raise because they are outstanding, the DJ. I mean, the, the TV timeouts are almost as exciting as the game. So I'm all in on the atmosphere. Um, I would have looked at that before the game ops adjustment and said they're a spoiled fan base. If they're playing LSU, it's an A. If they're playing Mississippi State or Arkansas, it's a C plus. That's, that's my, as a guy who travels all over the country, that's my interpretation of what I've seen in the past from Alabama. Now, Texas is coming to town. All that hype's coming to town. It'll be an A. You know, Ohio State's very similar. If Ohio State has Michigan in town or Penn State, they're as good as there is. If it's Northwestern or Minnesota or Purdue, it becomes a reactive crowd. Sack, crowd goes crazy. Touchdown, crowd goes crazy. But they're not creating the sack. They're not creating the interception. That, that's a proactive, up on your feet every time the defense is on the field. I think it'll be more like that this game uh, than it probably has been in quite some time. I hope that makes sense. Talk about the players in Last one, guys, feeling disrespected. As someone who talks to Nick Saban, do you think he feels disrespected or is that just a fuel to get back to the top of I don't think he feels disrespected. I, I think um, a lot of people made a big deal that David Pollock made a comment last year on the set with Coach there that, hey, Georgia's, the, after the, they won, Georgia's a new bar. I mean, Georgia won back-to-back -back championships. I don't think that was uh, anything that he was taking a shot the way it was being portrayed in social media at all. And I think Coach was just kind of nodding his head, like, what, what can you say? They won straight, two straight championships. But I think as a competitor, he, he's a, as big a competitor as anybody, um, you know, on that team, players or coaches. You know, he, he, part of the reason he keeps coming back is he loves that, that energy. He loves being challenged. He loves trying to climb the mountain and win the championship. So I don't necessarily think that he feels that, um, you know, he's using it in any way. I just think it's the way he's wired every single year, every single moment of his life. You guys are around him. The guy's ultra, ultra competitive. You guys have a great weekend. All right, see you guys.